Yat e shik edo shedene, my good relatives, all over the Navajo Nation and beyond the Navajo Nation. I want to say good day. This morning, on June the 1st, in 1868, at 9.15 in the morning, the Navajo people signed the peace treaty with the United States government at Fort Sumner, New Mexico. This was done after four years of being held in captivity at Fort Sumner. In 1864, our people were herded as prisoners of war all the way to Fort Sumner. And they were held captive there for four years. And so today, 154 years later, today, June the 1st, 2022, let us reflect back upon the significance of the signing of the peace treaty. Not necessarily in a historical, anthropological perspective, but rather to ask the question, what was it, what was it that our people had? What was it that our people thought? What was it that they relied upon to enable them to be there for four years? And in addition to that, what was it that enabled them to come to that point of arriving at signing a peace treaty, which allowed us, Nohokatane, to come back to our four sacred mountains? As you read a lot of the documents, historical documents, it has been said that the plan of the United States government was to relocate us Navajo people to the state of Oklahoma or to the state of Florida so that we could be removed from our homelands. That was really the thought. That was really the intent of the federal government. But then again, 1868, we were allowed to come back to our homelands within the confines and boundaries of our home of Sisnajin, Tsotzil, Dogosli, Debensa, our smoke hole and our door flap, that we were allowed to come back here. And so we asked the question today, what all took place in terms of how that all transpired? And so we asked the elders from a holistic, from a cultural perspective, how that was accomplished. And so their story is, and their teachings is that, our people significantly and tremendously relied upon the prayers and the songs and the ceremonies. But implicit in there was that the people relied upon the spirit of a warrior, what we call a warrior spirit, what we call a warrior mentality, what we call a warrior type of a discipline, that it's a certain way that you think, there's a certain way that you feel, there's a certain way that you approach matters and issues. And that warrior mentality and that warrior spirit is instilled in the young lady when she has her kinalta. When they massage her body, they massage her mind, soul, and spirit with that warrior spirit that someday that if they come across adversity, that they would be strong to it, that they would know how to overcome or they would adapt to certain adversity that may come their way. The same way with the young men. They have their sweat ceremony, they have that over there. 
And they instill that same warrior spirit, that same warrior teaching into them, that they could be the protectors, that they could be the hunters, that they could be the ones to be to bear arms against any harmful, evil, and dangerous things that might be out there, to protect the camp, to circle the camp on a regular basis, to ensure that there is nothing that is evil, nothing that is harmful to the women and children and the lifestyle that's there. That's what they're given. And so that spirit is the one that were used, that the people relied upon when they were being held captive. That's according to our teachings. Sure, there are the anthropological stories and then the account of maybe the Indian commissioner that was there, the journals that, the journals that were kept. But implicit, these stories were handed from generation to generation from the people that were there. And to this day, those stories are still there. So I think it's well worth to understand and think about what this warrior spirit is all about, what this warrior mentality, what this warrior discipline is all about. So we were through the, the songs and the, and, and the prayers and the ceremonies and through that warrior mentality, that's how we prevailed. And through that, we came back to our four sacred mountains over here. We came back here and to this day, we are here as a people within our four sacred mountains. And the federal government did not stop there. When we came back here to our four sacred mountains, then they instituted other things. Number one, they took our children to their boarding schools. At their boarding schools, they began to indoctrinate them into what they deemed as a civilized Indian. So they cut the hair. They admonished our children for speaking their language by eating soap or chewing tobacco. And they were abused like that. And as we all know today, it seems like finally people are waking up that these boarding schools were very, very evil in certain, in certain ways to our children because they were abused so much. Not only were they abused, but they were brainwashed in so many ways. And so all of those things, that's what was done to us as Nohokat and Neh. In addition to that, even our ceremonies, our ways of life, they were even questioned and we were indoctrinated to go another way. But today, guess what, my relatives? We still speak our language. Our language is still strong. We still have our language here. We still have our ceremonies here. We still have our one day, five nights, nine night ceremonies here. We still have our moccasins. We still have our necklaces. We still have our tziyeh. We still have these things that we live by. We still live in accordance with spring, summer, fall, and winter. We are still regulated by the way that the moon, the crescent moon, and then when there's a full moon, and then when it goes back, like that. We're still regulated by that. We're still regulated by our summer ceremonies and our winter ceremonies. So when you think of things like that, we're still here. We have not been annihilated. We have not been, 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 been totally acculturated. We're not. We are still very strong. So it's our prayers. It's our faith. It's our warrior mentality. It's our warrior discipline. Our warrior loyalty that we still have today that, are, that enables us to overcome these adversities. And again, today, we have certain adversities that we have. We have our social ills, the alcohol and the drugs. We have domestic violence. We have certain depressions. We have certain types of, of illnesses that are here. There's cancer. There's diabetes. 
There are certain sicknesses that we're never really around, but we, we're, we're dealing with that. We're dealing with the, 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 the way of the non-Navajo are anna'a the way that they live, the way that they go by. There's no kah. There's selfishness. There's self-centeredness. Just I, 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 I'm going to be the only one that's going to survive. I'm going to be the one that's going to make the most money or be the most powerful. That kind of mentality. We're being challenged like that every day. However, guess what, my relatives? We still have our four clans. Our our mother's clan, Bashilchin, our father's clan, Danhitche, our maternal grandfather's clan, and Danhinal, our paternal grandfather's clan. This clanship system still regulates a lot of our people. It still regulates the way that marriages are 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 are, are taken. These clanship systems still regulates the way that we look after one another, the way that we stand by one another and support one another. But most importantly, it enables us still to have love for one another. We still have love for one another. And so those are some adversities that, that we're facing today. Although that we're very technologically advanced, in so many ways, even though that we may not live the way that our people lived back in the 1800s or the early 1900s, the power and the spirit of our culture, the power and the spirit of the, the, the prayers and then our ways of life, it's still here. It's still as powerful as it was the day that it came. It was the way that it was developed and the way that it was created by the holy people in the black world. And so all of that is still here. We just need to come back to it. We need to begin to believe in it again. We need to begin to say that this is who I am. We need to begin to say that I am this clan. I am born for this clan. My chays are this clan. My nullas are this clan. We need to get back to that. Our government needs to operate like that again. Our government needs to say that let's go back to this rather than just be going another way, which is the, 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 the society that has been after us all these years. So we need to stand up to that as well, just like our, our people stood up. Chief Manuelito, Chief Narbona, and then Arbencito, and things like that. Those people relied upon this. They were not lawyers. They were not trained doctors in the Western medicine. They weren't Western psychologists. They weren't westernized engineers. But guess what? They made it. They survived it. What did they use? They used these cultural, ceremonial, holistic healing, our fundamental laws. They lived by that because they believed in it. They didn't just go through the motion. They believed in it. And they lived by it also. They didn't just talk about it. They actually implemented that into their daily life. So that's what they live by. And so you have to wonder, all of this adversity, even beyond, even maybe four or five times what we saw as COVID here just recently, it was worse than that. But nevertheless, we prevailed. And so it was that that enabled us to overcome that adversity today. And so we're coming back to it. We're going to get back to it. Back to this warrior mentality, this warrior spirit that we have as Nuhokat. 
We're going to get back to what it means to have that paint under our eyes again. To have that, see, what it means to have that headband. We're going to get back to what it means to have that kit. Oh. We're going to get back to what it means to have that seat oh, when we have kinalta. We're going to get back to what it means to put up a sweat for our young men when their voice changes. We're going to get back to what it means to have that idistin in the home, the grinding stone in our home, what that means to do all of that. Because those are all things that are used to overcome all this adversity that we that we that we were faced with all this time and so today i wanted to reflect back upon that and give you this message so that you could ponder that that you could think about it in that way not necessarily to continue to think about it from an anthropological manner or from a western historian way but to think about it from that that means from a holistic healing, from a holistic perspective that was derived from stories from generation to generation from our mothers and grandmas, grandpas, like that. So I wanted to share that with you today on this historical day to reflect back upon that. And begin to think about it like that. Must the intent that this is really a prayer for all of us, a prayer for our children, a prayer for our generation, a prayer for our the net blood flow that we can go some more into the future. And I wanted to share that with you. <laughs> Hallelujah, na shah, hallelujah, na shah, ee, 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 ee.